Good evening. This is the November 6, 2023 North Andover CPAC meeting. It is 7.05 and I call the meeting to order. We'll start first with any public comment. Hearing none, we'll move forward uh, to our next agenda item, which is our tiered focus monitoring. Um, and there's some representatives from Desi here. Marcy, if you'd like to do an introduction and then we can we can move on from there. Sure. So I'm gonna introduce Moses, who is above me, at least on my end. Um, Moses and I have more recently um, worked together in um, the process of going through the um, no longer tiered, but monitoring system that um, the department is um, is doing. So uh, we have an opportunity that he's gonna show us a brief video and be able to answer questions. And I think I recognize D from a few years back, three years back when we had our initial um, monitoring. And so she was the representative from DESE who went through the first process, or, well, I shouldn't say ours, my first mm -hmm. time going through um, the tiered focus monitoring process. So um i welcome both of them but so as far as i understand from the process there is like i said i think a five six minute video that they're going to show on the process and people here will have an opportunity just to ask questions about that process um i um there is a uh, press release that is online and that was sent out and um, there will be some information that will be sent out again in november i told uh, people that their on-site time is uh, November, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, 26th and 27th, the 27th and 28th. Um, so that is when DESE will be on-site in North Andover. Um, and they have pretty specific things in this round that they're, they're looking at in terms of special education and civil rights. So I think that'll be what they're talking about today. And they can give you some more information about that. Anything I missed, dear Moses? You said it all. Thank you so okay. much. <laughs> all right. Uh, you want me to go ahead? Is that all right, Sasha? You guys good? Yes, please. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, thank you for that introduction. I think you said everything I should have said. So um, I will just go straight away to the video. Uh, this time we uh, focus the, the the review is called Group B Review, uh, focusing more on civil rights section and also special education. Three years ago, we had Group A, which was more of a special education uh, and few of the civil rights areas. Um, so I wanna play this video. I hope I have the rights to play. Google Meet is quite friendly with that, I think. <laughs> All right, and tell me if you don't hear any sound. Hello and welcome to the parent orientation training about the tiered focused monitoring review that will take place in your school district. I am in Andrew McKenzie and one of three presenters you'll hear from. The other presenters, Winnie Coco and Elena Podmore, are colleagues of mine within the Office of Public School Monitoring. The Office of Public School Monitoring is a unit within the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. This office is made up of monitoring teams that work with school districts, charter schools, vocational schools, and virtual schools to ensure that the many different state and federal laws and regulations for special education and civil rights are being followed. In this presentation, I will provide details about the tiered focused monitoring process. The topics include the role of the Office of Public School Monitoring, the tiered focused monitoring components, the monitoring timeline, and how some of the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education offices work together. 
The Office of Public School Monitoring is responsible for overseeing how completely and consistently school districts adhere to the requirements of federal and state laws and regulations for special education and civil rights, including the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, or IDEA. The chairperson provides districts with technical assistance to correct areas where the district is not consistently or completely adhering to the laws. The department will conduct a Group B tiered focused monitoring review that examines parent and community engagement, school facilities, licensure of special education staff, professional development, IEP implementation, time and learning, and procedures that address equal access. To give a sense of what we do, I will now take you through the seven main areas of the review. Parent and community engagement assesses whether the district regularly reviews and updates its policies and procedures and makes important information available to parents and the community through translation. Parent and community engagement also identifies whether the district has a special education parent advisory council or CPAC and the role played by the CPAC. School facilities examines the spaces in which special education and related services are provided to ensure that these are adequately sized, accessible, safe, and integrated. Licensure ensures individual staff providing special education and related services are appropriately licensed. Professional development considers both required and additional training opportunities in the areas of special education and civil rights offered for teachers and staff based on their assigned role. IEP implementation addresses how a district implements each IEP and oversees special education programming and services. Time and learning ensures the district has set a calendar. In Massachusetts, elementary schools must provide at least 900 hours and secondary schools 990 hours of learning time. Finally, equal opportunity and access assesses whether the district provides programming for all students, including vocational education, advanced academic classes, physical education, work study, athletics, and school sponsored groups or clubs. We also examine the actions the district takes annually to review participation by subgroups, including by race, ability, economic status, and others, in order to eliminate barriers preventing certain students from taking part. Tiered focused monitoring is the process that the Office of Public School Monitoring uses to review how completely and consistently school districts adhere to the requirements of federal laws and regulations. Each school district undergoes tiered focus monitoring every three years. The review process includes the following components. Self-assessment, parent survey, on-site visit, analysis of the information gathered and reporting, and providing district support when necessary. Let's look at each of these steps a little more closely. The district self-assessment begins in the school year prior to the department's on-site visit. The self-assessment process allows districts to address any self-identified non-compliance and take steps to fix it even before the on-site is conducted. The district reveals relevant policies and procedures regarding special education, civil rights, and equitable access, examines the licensure of special education staff, and assesses whether facilities are adequately sized, accessible, safe, and integrated. The district answers questions about their policies, procedures, and systems to ensure laws and regulations are carried out. The district then submits the results of their review to the department. This includes providing the documents reviewed. In preparing for the on-site visit, the chairperson reviews all parts of the district's self-assessment and any additional documents provided. The chairperson also analyzes data reported by the district annually to identify discrepancies. The data reviewed includes graduation rates, advanced placement course enrollments, discipline, 
and special education eligibility and placement. The chairperson examines data for all student populations, including different racial or cultural identities, English learner status, or students with disabilities. The chairperson uses the self-assessment and the data review to develop an onsite plan that helps examine areas in which he or she has questions or need closer examination. Interviews are then scheduled with the Director of Special Education and Special Education Parent Advisory Council or CPAC chairperson. Additional interviews may also include other administrators and staff. The CPAC is an organization that provides support and activities for parents, participates in the planning, development, and evaluation of the district special education programs, and adds an important voice to a school district's dialogue and decision making. The CPAC is open to all parents of students found eligible for special education in the district, as well as other interested parties. The chairperson sends a survey shortly before the onsite visit to all parents whose children currently have an IEP. Please keep an eye out for your survey as they sometimes end up in junk email. If you do not have a personal email, the chairperson can provide the survey in other ways. The parent survey has multiple choice questions and open response questions to capture parent comments. The questions ask about your experience as a parent with the special education process in your district. The chairperson reviews survey responses to gain the parent's perspective. This information enhances our onsite monitoring process and our discussion with the district. After the onsite visit, the data is compiled and reviewed. This thorough process enables the chairperson to determine if the district abides by the laws and regulations governing each of the specific areas examined. The chairperson, based on the analysis of data, student record review and interviews, develops a report. For each focus area, we assign one of four possible ratings. Commendable, exceeds the requirements. Implemented, meets the requirements. Partially implemented, meets some but not all requirements, and not implemented, does not meet the requirements. The report is sent to the district within 60 days of the onsite visit. The final report with the district's action plan is available to the public on the department's website, and the district is required to make the report available to the public. After the report is issued, the chairperson works closely with the district to develop the action plan to address any issues identified in the report. Here are examples of support. To correct non-compliance in circumstances where the district does not regularly evaluate special education programming, the chairperson guides the district to develop a corrective action plan that establishes procedures, participation, timelines, and reporting for internal program evaluation. The chairperson then reviews evidence of the district's progress or actions to ensure special education program evaluation occurs. Even when a district is fully in compliance, there are ways the Office of Public School Monitoring works with districts to increase positive student outcomes. Chairpersons can identify training opportunities, resources, and materials. This graphic summarizes the tiered focus monitoring cycle. Every three years, the process begins with the district preparing a self-assessment based on the department guidelines. Then public school monitoring conducts on-site activities resulting in a report identifying if the district meets legal requirements. The public school monitoring chair works with the district to achieve compliance if necessary by developing action plans and progress reporting. In year three, the district internally monitors the results of any corrective action completed. Within three years of the Group B review, the district begins a new TFM cycle known as the Group A. The focus of the Group A review is on the district's special education process and procedures, as well as how the district provides equal opportunity and equal access to all students. There are five areas of focus the department will review, special education identification, parent involvement, IEP development, programming and support services, and equal opportunity and access. The steps of the process are the same, self-assessment, on-site review, analysis and report, action plans, 
along with progress reporting. Just as in Group B, the Group A review also includes data review, policy and procedure review, interviews, and parent service. Furthermore, the Group A review examines individual special education records. The department has offices that look at school districts' compliance with education laws and regulations from different points of view, with each providing different supports or information to parents. The Problem Resolution Services Office is available to help you address specific questions or complaints regarding your child's education, special education services, or school experience. In the Office of Public School Monitoring, we look at documents, data, and trends in district-wide practices to determine compliance with laws and regulations. If you want to access this presentation or other resources, please visit the Office of Public School Monitoring Parent Resource page. The Office of Public School Monitoring is happy to answer any questions you have about tiered focus monitoring. The tiered focus monitoring review process is an important part of your child's education. We look forward to your participation. Thank you again for taking your time to watch this presentation. Thank you again for holding on. <laughs> That's our presentation, and if you have any question, um, we'll try to answer. As you think about that, uh, there was, um, you had about parent surveys, you received that in, in due course before the review. Uh, please, again, check emails everywhere. Sometimes they end up in the, in, in the junk email. And uh, of course, if you have, if you don't have email, there are other ways you can share with the school district and you'll be able to do the service as well. Any questions? Thank you, Moses. I just want, just uh, Moses, I think I had told you um, before, maybe I, maybe I didn't. So I just, because it is sometimes confusing to families, we have two similar processes going on at the same time here. We have a, a third party independent um, special education review also happening. So those parent surveys were actually going up tomorrow. So, or they, I actually, they might have gone up, my, Michelle may have gotten them out tonight. I'm not exactly sure. So just as we're talking about surveys today, those are not the surveys you will be receiving tonight, receiving tonight or tomorrow. You'll be receiving, receiving these surveys sometimes next, sometime next week, just so we can just add confusion in there and people love surveys. So um, that will not be what you see tomorrow, just FYI. Yeah, and they will be from the Department of right. Mental and Secondary Education. You have that title. Yep. And so um, someone had asked, so the um, surveys will be going to services, anyone who received, so the surveys that are going out from the review are going to all families and the um, tiered focus monitoring just goes to special education families. So those receiving services only, um, those out of district and those receiving uh, services in district. Just a little difference. Sure. So I have a question to start, if that's helpful. I have a, I have a couple, um, and then perhaps other folks will think about things that maybe they have questions about. So I was just wondering um, in that presentation, firstly, Moses, if is, is it possible for CPAC to get a, a copy of that presentation so we can share that on our Facebook page and throughout social media? Yes, uh, I'll send a link to Masi, then you'll be able to get from there. You call that would be Masi? great. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. Thank you. And we, I'd love to um, do the same with the urban collaborative survey mercy if we can. Um, and then I'm just wondering a bit about, um, you know, you mentioned that the district has the opportunity to self identify any items of non compliance. Did North Andover self identify any items of non compliance before the process started? I would say pretty good. They have done pretty well, you know, the only thing I didn't have. So the only thing we didn't provide, which I actually, we do have now, and I, I can provide is um, mm -hmm. the bylaws, the CPAC bylaws. Okay. So thanks for the reminder. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say they're, they are 
fresh and new. We just voted on them, Moses. These are brand new ones. We we updated yeah. them and, and yeah, we talked I about actually them. I think I did send the old. I ended up so just so people know, like we when they say that the stuff we have to upload like was a million years ago, like in May. So that that is um I sent old so an old version which was really outdated. So um we submit, we had like a certain cutoff date in May to submit all the information. So there's a little bit of a a, a gap in between when they receive the information and when the actual visits happen. And I think we had a question in our chat as well. Um, I'd be interested to hear what was self-identified. Are there any other self-identified items? Okay. No. So the no. answer is no. Um, let me, um, if you don't mind, let me just jump in and say, um, three years ago, there were no findings. So there's a high bar. <laughs> and Marcy rose to the occasion last, um, during the last review, so it's not surprising that uh, the um, district's in good shape at this point. So just kind of a pat on the back for Marcy and her previous efforts. And that one was a group A where we really dove into the student records and it was, they did an excellent job. Right, and I will say this one is the majority, or not the majority, but more so like the the A part is more special ed than civil rights. This one is more civil rights than special education. And that's a collaborative app. Pam Lathrop, with help of Cindy Parent, submits the most of that, uh, submits most of that information. So I can't speak. I I can't speak to the civil rights aspect if there was any other pieces of that. But from what I heard from Moses, um, there there wasn't. I'm so sorry. I don't know your first name. The woman who just spoke, just so we have it on record. I'm sorry. Um, D D E E Y W Y A T T. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, it. So all. not to be, but so we did review some of the two, 2021 um, group A findings prior just to try to, at least for me, this is my first time. I don't work in special education, but my understanding was that North Andover was found non-compliant and in indicator 11 about initial evaluation timelines. So uh, how does that work when you're working towards corrective action? Just because I don't understand that process. So we were found non-compliant and then how do we, um, how does the district show compliance generally speaking? And then how does that work? Um, actually, that is almost like a separate process. It was, um, there was information submitted uh, in May, the spring of that year uh, that we did the review. And it's really, um, that information is outside of the tiered focus monitoring, really. Uh, we looked at uh, timelines on um, uh, when people were referred, making sure that uh, by the time, you know, uh, consent comes in, that that IEP was, um, the meeting took place within 45 days, that sort of thing. And um, there's a lot to that because we also would dive into the documentation as to if a timeline was missed, what, you know, what, you know, was the reason. And a lot of times the reason is outside the district's um, control. Uh, sometimes parents can't make it or a parent will bump the meeting. But anyway, all of that was taken care of that summer. We we pretty much took care of that um, before August of that year. And the um, there was a uh, progress report that came in to correct. I'm not sure. I don't have it in front of me exactly what it was that uh, was the reason for the noncompliance. But it it had to do with looking to make sure that the um, meetings, IT meetings, were held within 45 days of being referred for special education evaluation. Uh, but the um, progress reporting was um, done and over with before fall even. Uh, we wanted to make sure that was taken care of before the new school year began. So and in the corrective action, Sasha, is typically like a train, a retraining of this of staff. So at some agenda or at some um, staff meeting, we would have had to show the department that, and I don't recall, I don't, I actually don't recall even that, but I'm, I'm sure, um, yeah. That we would have to show them some the, the training and the training materials that we used in order to re, like remind people of those timelines. Right. And if those timelines aren't, because again, even, whether it's a teacher was absent, you know, any of those situations, that that information should be documented and that N1 letter that comes, because it's not just a matter, they don't just go and say, oh, the dates don't mix. They're looking for a reason why. And oftentimes, if there was a reason why, that's your, you know, they, they're okay with the reason why. but we didn't necessarily have those reasons that, that reason why or if you didn't have that reason why so the training was more so around how you document that information um 
but it, it wasn't anything, you know, there, there was not necessarily an egregious thing. The, the thing that I think that there was um, pieces about is that that our three years ago was also over COVID. So there was lots mm -hmm. of conversations around timelines and what was happening during that time too. But the corrective action, there's always a training on the district's part that we have to show documentation of for that training. Thank you for that clarification. Appreciate it. I think that 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 and maybe for other parents is is what I was trying to understand is when something is pointed out, whether it be big or little, you know, what then do you do to correct it or what is required by DESE? And so basically just to reiterate what you're saying and may, maybe Moses, I think you were jumping in as well. So then there's a corrective action plan that, that DESE provides and then the district adheres to it. Is that, is that, am I summarizing that correctly? Yeah, you are, you are saying it correctly. And at the end, there's also a review of additional records or additional a, a new data set uh, the district reviews random records to ensure that whatever the training that happened were actually was effective so if all the other records are okay and the and the people who are involved are doing their job then it shows that the you know, the training was effective and the problem is corrected and then uh, uh, we move on Thank you. Um, I just quickly looked up the reason for the noncompliance in the um, timelines, and it um, did have to do with the COVID uh, issue bumping in. And even though that seems like it would be within um, outside the district's control because you know COVID, but what was the the thing was having the documentation that they uh, contacted the parent and agreed on mutually uh, bumping the meeting to a, another time. So we did, COVID was what um, kind of delayed those timelines. Thank you. Any additional questions? I just have a question about timelines. Um, so you said a survey will occur like in the next week or two, and then what, what happens next? Uh, what happens next after the survey, which can be ongoing also, uh, we are coming out uh, on the 28th uh, to the district to observe, and uh, 29th we shall have the interviews and also the closing remarks, the conclusion. And we also review data so if you find something in the data that has been submitted to the department that ties to our process uh, we will talk about that and if there is any corrective action that needs to be done after that then there's a process for that for progress reporting as well and uh, there's usually one year uh, for the district to be compliant so we should anticipate if the report within 60 days of the 20, the end of the month, essentially. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. John. Hi. Yes. Um, I had a question actually about the new IEPs. Um, when will they be starting to be utilized and will there be parent training as well as teacher training for that? Massey, maybe. Yep. yep. Sorry, I was just getting off mute. Um, so September 2024 is when we'll be starting um, possibly a little trial before them. But um, from what we understand, our um, eSped, which is the um, product system that we use, won't uh, pro probably won't have the documents uploaded into their system yet. So that might delay us a little bit. Um, but every district has to start September 2024. So our teachers are currently being trained. Uh, we as a CPAC, we talked at CPAC about potentially doing a parent training um, through this venue. Um, yes, <laughs> yeah, and there's, it's, we're still, you know, we're we're at the new end of our training. So there will be information going out to parents about that. I had sent some some information and some examples um, in a parent newsletter um, that I sent out in October, and I'll be resending that information. My hope, like I, I would love um, to do a mock meeting. I think that's going to be 
um, probably one of our, you'll, you'll see the, the information, the, the style has changed and there are a few kind of um, things that seem very different, but a lot of the information is very similar, but the way it's presented is a little different, which makes, well, it's going to make it challenging for both teachers and, and families. So, but yes. Okay. Thank you. Rachel. Um, just as somebody that went to the training for the new IEP rollout, um, I think the most important thing that parents on here need to know is the goal of Department of Ed is to make it a parent friendly and student friendly document. Um, that is really the push. That was the biggest takeaway that I took from it is that the language needs to be uh, a more level playing field that parents need to be able to open that document and truly understand what is happening on a daily basis. Um, so I think you're right, Marcy, it's gonna feel a little bumpy at first for everybody, um, but the more that I spend time with the document, I really enjoy it. And I really think that it it is far more student and parent centered. Um, and I think over time, I think parents will come to enjoy it a little bit more. Uh, Moses, I, I think I'm summarizing for Department of Ed, but I know that that was, that was the stress. Great. That's a good description, I think. It starts with the students and it ends with the student. It does. Very clear, actually. And, and just from a CPAC parent support perspective, um, to your point, Don, we plan on doing a lot, as much programming as we can in the spring around this to prepare parents for that transition. So we have talked to Marcy both kind of you know, privately saying, hey, what's your training looking like and how can we integrate parents and then at, at our meetings? Um, and we also have um, pushed off. So we, um, as part of our met membership to the Federation, we get one presentation as part of our membership for free. And so we actually had um, um, Holly Vitsky do a, a basic rights presentation for us in the fall so that we could save that presentation with the Federation for the spring. And the idea is that by then, hopefully they have, you know, that presentation is more focused on the new IEP that in, in conjunction with the resources the district has, hopefully we can we can do some significant programming to help all families. That's the goal. Um, the new IP is, um, I really feel like uh, it's going to be well received. You know, people resist change. I was, you know, everyone's like, oh, you know, another document or whatever. But this one was created in a way that just, it, it's almost written where you just can't miss anything. I mean, it takes, you know, you line by line. And if you answer yes to this, then more things drop down. And that way you check, check, check. If you answer no to this, then it, there's not a drop down. You don't have to address those things, but it really keeps things from falling through the cracks. So by the time that entire IP, um, you, you go through the process and get to the end, everything that should um, um, apply to that child should have been addressed. Um, and, I'll, somewhere I'll give, in there. and just to give one really good example of this, I think the things that like people were like at ease seeing and from a parent perspective, you can imagine like, for instance, summer school, you know, you look at some, you have a grid, you, everyone has a grid on their IEP and in the grid says summer school. Now there's a totally different section. So you're not searching for things like that for summer services. So it like, it clearly delineates things. And if you live in places other than this state, it's it's very close to what they call the federal model. So like, it, like what I've seen, it's like I've almost seen this IEP for people come in from New York or other states. They use a model that's pretty similar to it. So it's new to us, but it's not necessarily new to everybody. So it's a, I think it's a familiar model. And uh, like I said it's, it's, it's going to be time. It's going to, because everyone's going it, to, it's the dance moves that parents are used to, that, that teachers are used to, that providers are used to. Um, but I, I think in, in time, it will be a, a better model. Great. All right. Thank you so much. Any other questions before we move on from the DESI presentation? Thanks. Well, thank you both so much for coming. Really appreciate it. I mean, you can feel free to stay on our CVAC meeting. Also, I'm sure you have lots to do in the evening. So um, thank you, thank for you so us. much for coming. All right. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. Thanks. Uh, so the next thing on our agenda was originally um, just uh, 
uh, Pam Lathrop, the Assistant Superintendent of Teaching and Learning, was actually going to attend to discuss MAP and Dibbles 8. Um, unfortunately, she is not able to attend tonight. Um, I don't know. Um, I just, I think that for all parents and also for special education parents, but for all parents, um, you know, having the map sent out and the doubles eight, there's a lot of confusion. I know that several of the board members of CPAC have gotten um, messages in the last couple of days with questions from parents. Um, and so I think that um, it would be great. We, I know that we are preparing some very specific questions for, for Pam. And then, um, you know, we'd love to get her in maybe even a separate meeting that's a little bit sooner than, you know, in December um, so that we could potentially get some information out to parents and allow parents to ask questions in that type of, of format. Um, with you, Marcy, I know you and, and Pam potentially were speaking about that as well. Yeah, can um, I just ask a quick question? Sorry, I think you guys, like I, I've, I've been out of the loop for a little bit, but did, yeah. so I, did the principal, did, they, did the school-based letters go out about Dibbles or just the letter from Pam Lathrop? I think just a letter from Pam Lathrop, because you're going to get individual, you, you didn't get your student information about Dibbles yet, did you? We did, we some, did. some did, so Thompson did. School did. Okay. And, and quite frankly, it's a one page letter with three check boxes. For the Dibbles, not from that. It's for Dibbles, about. correct. Okay. And so, um, especially some of the parents that I, you know, that, that from Thompson have received both, mm -hmm. there's some confusion and not understanding the correlation or lack thereof between the two tests, what the tests are looking for, and quite frankly, why they're not receiving specific Dibble scores Got and it. just check marks for the three boxes. So I hadn't seen the individual, I saw Pam's letter, but I hadn't seen the individual letter. So I was unclear and um, if those had gotten out because I also, part of my, when I, you know, again, just, just hearing the correspondence, I, I agree. I feel like there needs, I'm, I'm talking from my perspective as a as special education in terms of special education. Um, and, and again, we've talked about this as directors in other places. I feel like there might need to be another layer of explanation and discussion in there as well. Um, because you know, you're going to, I mean, you know, for the most part, like for, for, for a student that is struggling in, you know, a, an area such as reading acquisition, you know, what you're going to see. So, um, thank just, you. I'll get a copy from, um, Chris Raymond and, and see what that looks like as well and, and, and talk to them a little bit more about that. Yeah. And I think just understanding, so understanding who to send parents to, cause my understanding, um, ha, you know, is that. And the, the reading interventionist did the testing and that for, for Thompson, for example, perhaps the, the teachers don't have that data. So like tomorrow is a is parent-teacher conferences. Yeah. So and the so, teachers should definitely have that data. The teachers should should should. I mean, they should have that data because at least the letter that was sent out initially is that I mean, they're the ones that you should they should be your first line of asking without a doubt. So, so this, right, so here, and this is, I think, why um, we were hoping to have this conversation, especially mm -hmm. for special education parents who may be, you know, very cued into to some of the, some, some metrics, and this is just one more metric to add to kind of maybe the list of, of other testing that you have as well, um, but just who to go to, you know, how to approach it, where to get their specific scores, um, both composite and subtest scores, uh, those kind of questions. I think are are being asked and then just you know what is the difference between map and dibbles and what should i be doing so there's also a lot of gen ed um parents yeah. who, who approached us saying hey i don't know what to do with this data yep. i'm not sure how to how to approach it what do i do now and we don't have clarity we want to be in sync with the district obviously on on how to advise them to move forward so um Sasha, when's your next um C, uh, pto president's meeting do you have that? I just had it. Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah. I was gonna say, that might be a nice venue. You know what I mean? To ha to include everybody that I could go to that meeting as opposed to them coming to this meeting. But we'll we can talk about it more because I agree. I agree. I think there's there's more discussion to be had. Absolutely. So just so everyone knows, so that has been tabled. We're hoping to do that piece uh, as soon as we can. And in the interim, if you have specific questions, feel free to send them to hello at northanoverseapac.com. Um, and then we can like not about your student, but like, hey, who do I go to? Or, you know, we are preparing some of those questions. We can make sure that those are addressed in a public forum. Um, Alyssa. 
I will say at our school committee meeting, um, Pam Lathrop did present on MCAS, and I know Ms. Petrowski, one of the questions she had was bringing in um, MAP and Dibbles and seeing how that correlates to MCAS and how, how that lines up as well. Um, so that's also some more data that we're looking into through the school committee as well. And that, and that will be, that's awesome. Um, very much appreciate um, Alyssa's joining us on our, and being our liaison. I think it's great. Um, and also making sure that that stuff is presented to the school committee. I do think that having Pam here so parents can ask questions because it, they aren't able to do that freely, right? We can only kind of submit public comments um, might be really helpful. So just something for us to talk about and hopefully um, an I avenue. And I wonder if in the meantime, if you, if we want to solicit some questions, if we could do an FAQ, like a, you know what I mean? Like that might not, like we used to do like around COVID and other things like yep. a, that might not be a, um, you know, I, and there, there'll probably be a lot of overlapping questions, but that might not mm -hmm. just to get some general stuff out of the way of things you've been hearing, you know, if we want to start a document and start and start looking at that too. So people don't have to wait for some of the more you know, surface stuff that we can get, you know, some concerns, concerns quelled, you know, in the more immediate. So we can talk more about, I'll talk to Pam about that tomorrow too. Thank you. And just generally, you know, who do they go to? Is it the teacher? Is it the team? Is it the, you know, whatever it may be? I think that'd be great. Okay. Um, any questions about MAP or Dibbles? Not that we could answer them specifically, but about this conversation, please let us know. So quick question, Marcy, are you saying that um, that you're going to put that FAQ together for us and you'll share that with us? So it's not me. So I don't, so I'm not, so, you know, I don't, I, I hear and I'm part of those conversations around screening, but I'm not the person who I would be the, the expert in that area. So what I said, I'll talk to Pam and maybe, and I, you know, maybe an FAQ at this point, because if we're saying, you know, people, people are looking for answers now that don't want to wait till next month for the next PTO meeting or the next time we sit down. So maybe if they're, if you guys are hearing things already that we can put together an FAQ and I'll talk to Pam about that and we'll collaborate on it. Cause I don't know, I don't know the specific questions yet. So I wouldn't necessarily put together the, F, I don't have the, the questions. So if you guys have a person collaborate on what the questions are and I will say so it would be, it would be Pam, it would be Kristen Ando, it would be Carol Larkholm. Those are your screening, looking at curriculum, map dibbles people. So is there something already that exists then that, that families can look to now um, in terms of getting this data home? I don't know. I can ask that question. Great. Thank you. Yep. Rachel. Ooh, can you hear me? Sorry. Yep. I think the key is not uh, that I think it's great that we're going to do all of these things and put out an FAQ and all of that. I think tomorrow as parents, it is your opportunity to ask for clarity though. Don't forget that. So like we're tabling our next steps as CPAC, but you received your letter home. Do not put it off to the side, <laughs> bring it to your conference, ask for the specific numbers. Even if your child checked and they're not at risk, okay, but you still want to understand at risk for what, based on what. So I think it's really important that when the paperwork is sent home for MAP and Dibbles, which is great that it's being sent home, that's the right thing. That's the what the state is you know, asking us to do now. I think it's great because you know they're insisting that parents be a part of the conversations earlier. But if you're not understanding what those numbers are, that needs to be a part of your conference tomorrow. And I think to Rachel's point, um, so Dibbles has uh, subtests and composite scores. And so really understanding, um, especially if you fall in any of those other two categories, you know, what exactly were your subtest scores, not just your composite scores. Um, Emily, where can we get information about what the numbers mean once we have them? Your teacher should be able to walk you through that. And Rachel, do you have another answer? you yeah the reading interventionists would be the best people that being said it is public online <laughs> dibbles eight which is the assessment you can find the correlating like grid well i think know, that's what, what Zora was asking too right so maybe there's some like uh that can be part of an epic like a, a sheet that goes out I, i'm again i don't know what te i hope teachers have that information i'm assuming that they do because there's no way that information went out and teachers aren't going to be prepared for it some might be more knowledgeable than others but um, and if the, your teacher says tomorrow, oh, I don't have that data handy, that's okay. They can email it to you. And if they say the reading interventionist has it, that's okay. They can email it to you <laughs> and then you just follow up. Um, but that, you know, when they send you those numbers, 263 or 14 or whatever it is, um, you can specifically ask 
the reading interventionist or your classroom teacher, what is this telling me? And then honestly, you can throw them into the Google um, for Dibbles 8 and uh, Zora actually, I think we probably hear it link even um, that we could put in the chat. That would and be great. That would be it. Perfect. All right, thank you everyone. So we have that in the chat. So the next item is just any um, update from Marcy, the director, executive director of special education. I think we've done a lot of, of joint discussing tonight, so I'm not expecting any formal update, but I, I know there's a lot going on. Yeah, I don't really have anything. I apologize. I have been out with a family issue the last couple of weeks, um, so I am just kind of um, getting back on track. Um, I, know I, I ordered my CPAC um, awareness sweatshirt today, so I will put that out there. I hope everybody else does. Um, so I know we have some nice events coming up. Uh, the year is flying. I feel like the year is already flying by. Uh, we had our second um, IEP training with, um, my goodness, name slipping me. Al Alan Rachel. Bloom. Yeah, thank you. Uh, with Alan Bloom this past Friday with our teachers. Uh, we we just received not just it's been two weeks now an additional grant from Desi to help um, with some additional training. So someone was recently asking about grants, so that will be helpful. Um, so we um, can look at our kind of own providers to being leads in each building and being a, a point person. Um, but they're very specific about what we can use those funds for. Um, but we're grateful to get those funds. Um, so I will be working on that and letting people know who those point people are, and they might be doing some of the family presentations as well. Um, that might be a nice building based, smaller way to do those things. Um, so I'll be getting more information about that. But, you know, we've been, um, you know, kind of engulfed in our, our review process and a tier for focus monitoring. And once we get through November, that process should be closed and we'll be seeing the results at the beginning of the year. Um, and we'll have other things to talk about. Thank you. I have, I have a quick question about Urban Collaborative. So um, when is the timeline for their final reporting? They said after the first of the year. So I think they, they I, I, I'd have to look again, but I believe, I can't remember if they said 60 days or 90 days, but it was somewhere in that vicinity. Okay. It was, so that, I recall saying like it was going to be before budget time. So that's what that, I, it was, that was my question. Yeah, that's what I, it, it must have been, they said sometime after January. So I, because I remember us having a conversation about prior to February. Okay, great. Good. All right. So we can move on to old business in the agenda. Um, and I am just pulling this up. So the first item is approval of meeting minutes. So I'm actually going to skip that. And the reason I'm going to skip that is that I didn't link that in our agenda. So before we approve the meeting minutes and there's a couple meetings to approve, I just want to have those linked in there so that everyone has access to them before we, we formally approve them, if that's okay with the rest of the board. Um, the next is just CPAC Awareness Month. So um, on November 14th, we have an event at Time and Cookie Monster. So pretty psyched about that. Um, we are actually going to have uh, from five to eight, we are going to have uh, the, the uh, event room in Cookie Monster set aside with raffles. Um, and with uh, actually Rachel Bedard has tried to move around her schedule. We just got that word today. So she may be able to be there to be creating apparel at the event, which is like so exciting. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to have our 50 50 raffle at time kind of in that little waiting area. That's our hope is to do that there. And then 15% uh, of all sales from both locations will go to the North Andover CPAC and 25. Right, 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 Meg. Lauren, 25% of B Designs um, profits go to CPAC as well for all of the apparel. And then the cool part is that last year we petitioned the select board to have a proclamation for CPAC Awareness Day in North Andover, which is the third Friday of every month. I mean, of every November, excuse me. And so the 17th is CPAC Awareness Day, and we invite all of the students in North Andover to wear yellow or wear CPAC gear. So we have a really cool um, kind of our new logo and new designs on the Be Designed website, um, which we're really proud of. And uh, actually, the logo was designed um, by us, and Lauren Stedman took a really 
um, amazing role in kind of working through that um, in conjunction with Meg and, and everyone else. Um, and then also with the, the, the future is inclusive design. So we are really excited. Um, I would just ask also that if you have any questions um, to let us know and that on the flyer that has gone out in the nightly newsletter, there is a Venmo. And so you can Venmo in advance for any tickets and just write prizes or 50-50. Um, and then you can be entered into one of those raffles. And Rachel can tell you a bit probably about the raffle prizes. They're pretty exciting. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of highlight the ones that we've already secured that are incredible. Uh, we have a family pack of Stephen Coolidge Winter Lights tickets, which they're sold out on most dates already, but we have a family pack. Uh, free month uh, classes unlimited at F45, the gym. Um, free month of Ninja Gym classes unlimited. Uh, restoration Barbershop, uh, value of $185. It's a gift basket and a $100 gift uh, certificate for haircuts, $100 gift card for Burton's restaurant. We've got two car wash books to the North Andover car wash for the premium car washes for five of them each. So $100 value for each. We have one full spot for summer fun, fully paid, which is huge. Uh, we have a three month membership for a family to the Y. And then among that, we also have gift cards to Learning Express, Kumon Tutoring, Taste Buds for classes, um, the Wax Room for any spa services. Uh, so we have a lot of really awesome um, raffle prizes. Uh, everybody, all the small businesses in town really turned out to support us. So, you know, definitely I've, we've already got some Venmos coming in for the raffles uh, and for the 50-50. So, Let's go. It's good prizes. It's exciting. Yes. Thank you, Rachel, for all your work securing a lot of those raffles. Um, we really appreciate it. And Zora for working with the youth center to secure the summer fun spot. Lauren. And for the shirts, Rachel from B Design, let us know tonight that the 13th, November 13th is looking like the last day to get your orders in so that you have them to wear for the 17th. Um, there might be some last minute shopping on the 14th, but I, you know, the earlier you get them in the better to make sure that you have your gear for that Friday. So November 13th, we'll put that out there is going to be our deadline for ordering. Meg. Awesome. And if you have any video or pictures of you with the gear, we would love you can send it. You can tag us on Facebook or you can email us at hello at North Andover CPAC. Um, we're going to try. Rachel actually offered. I didn't tell you guys to make some videos for us and I can do that as well. So. We really appreciate that. And the second thing is somebody just texted me to let me know that the um, the little thingy, the QR code, I couldn't even think of the name, is not working on the flyer. So we're going to have to update that, but it has the Venmo on it. So um, you can, people can Venmo, but just so, yeah, it's double check. Yeah. If you want to put it in the chat, it's fine. <laughs> Oh, it's your Venmo. Yeah, yeah, I'll put that in the chat. Okay. And it is, it is, just so you, everyone knows it is um, Rachel's Venmo. We are keeping a log and spreadsheet to make sure that it's allocated yeah. properly. Um, and we can share that publicly if anyone would like to request that. Um, we are working on um, an EIN, which would then be able to um, be utilized to get our own Venmo. Um, we uh, are working through that internally. All right. Any other questions about? I was going to say, if you want to share, just just share with me what you had posted, and I'll can ask principals to put it in their Friday newsletter too. If you guys haven't reached out to them yet. Yeah, that, that would be awesome. We're actually working on one. Like, so we had two flyers, so we're actually working on one um, combined flyer that has all like CPAC awareness month, okay. everything, mm -hmm. and we were just finalizing that today. So hopefully by tomorrow we can send that out and then get that into the principal's newsletter. So be great. Sorry, I actually put that in the chat, so I forgot that if it wasn't completely updated. So don't send that out to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I think that um, that is is kind of our discussion about the November. Um, November events, but we also have an amazing event that um, Lauren and Meg have been working on in December. So Lauren, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, I was able to meet with TriPAC again. So our event is locked in for December 8th. That's a Friday at Newburyport. Um, RN Aesthetics is the location. 
we're working on some great catering options that they have there that is looking to be donated. Um, we actually had a lot of families um, from the Tritown area as well as here in North Andover that have reached out to me to do some really great um, donations in terms of um, alcohol and just different merchandising things that they're looking to also present there. So it's going to be a wonderful event. So please put it in your calendars now from 4 to 8 on December 8th. Um, it's going to have everything from your fun injectables, so Botox, fillers, to, so you can look amazing for the holidays, but also wellness shots, facials, just a real feel-good night for everyone to come out and relax and get to know each other within the two communities. So I hope you all can join us. It's an awesome opportunity. Thank you, Lauren. Okay, the next item under old business is just a website update. That is me. Uh, we just have, it should be ready as soon as we just go over like the copy and everything. So it's moving right along. Awesome. Do you have any questions? Sorry, I thought you were <laughs> looking like your question. Sorry. No, I don't. I don't think so. So I think that we just need to review some of the copy, and then um, if anyone in the with the greater group has any feedback on things that they would love to see or things that they have seen before, please feel free to shoot some you know ideas in the chat. Um, we are working on a fully accessible website, so um, again, complying with WCAG standards as best you know as as we can, and making sure that we also have resources for families posted on there. Um, and so if there's any resources that you wish that were, you know, things that don't exist that you wish did, please let us know and we will do our best to work on that for you. One of the cool things we have right now is she was able to enable a widget that can um, translate it into like every language possible, which I haven't really seen a lot. Um, so I thought, I think that's pretty cool and exciting. That's we great. We'll hopefully have that widget soon too. That's great. Actually, Marcy, that is a question I had. Does the, so the North Andover's website, which I know is kind of out of your, your control generally, but is that going to be restructured to be um, accessible? Yes. Yeah, so um, we just, it happened I, I, usually last week, the week before, um, probably something similar to what you're talking about, Meg. I, um, an, I don't even, a, a company that basically it's like on, it's like on demand translation of lots for lots of different reasons. I, I, I believe there was a follow up meeting today, so we should have more information about it. Will they also work on like other accessibility so that it can be used by like readers or font or any of I those things? Talk, yeah, we can talk to Mike Grant about it. It should be. Yeah. I mean, I, I those things are relatively, I mean, there's a lot of current applications that we can apply to those that you know not, that aren't around translations that are free so um i could definitely talk to him about that that would be great and also mm -hmm. i think our designer did a lot of research and mike's awesome so i don't mm -hmm. not that he needs that but i think she did a lot of research on what was like a very um a more like friendly um app that was cost effective but did all of the things that we needed mm -hmm. and so we're also happy to you know show him what what she came up with and if that's yep. helpful yep she showed me some of the accessibility like obviously all they like, went through it all and it is so cool i didn't even realize like what could be done the colors can be changed for people who are colorblind the sizes like it's very um a dyslexia font all these things that um are Really incredible. Great. All right, so let's keep moving. Um, the next item is just new business. So we have a very exciting new business item. Um, Lisa Cordima is on with us today and we are going to be voting on a liaison appointment for the Kittredge School. So I'm not sure if Lisa is able to unmute at this time, but she has, hey Lisa. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. We're so excited to have you. Of course, good to be here. Awesome, so um, the way that we typically appoint a liaison is it's just a standard vote from the executive committee. So I will ask for a nomination. I nominate Lisa Cordima to be the um, school liaison for the Kittredge School. Do I have a second? Seconded. 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you so much, Lisa. You're officially a Kedridge liaison. And Lauren, as our vice uh, vice president, uh, she typically is the person that corresponds with all of our liaisons. So if you could put your best email um, and contact information or just email if you prefer in the chat, and then you can exchange contact information um, with Lauren via email, then we'll make sure to get you on that listserv and you'll get all of the information you need um, to move forward. Perfect. Thank you. I believe I already have a communication from Lauren. So perfect. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So the next item, and I have a few, uh, a couple other items just under um, uh, new business and then presence report. So new business, the other item is just planned programs for spring 2024. So um, actually two of them, Rachel, feel free to discuss them if you'd like. Yeah, sure. So an exciting one is we um, reached out and we have partnered. Uh, the primary person that brought it to us was Canton CPAP. Uh, they've obtained Sarah Ward, who is a guru of executive functioning, uh, to do an online virtual training for any CPACs that want to partner. So as soon as we saw that, we jumped on it. Sarah Ward is uh, she started out as a speech and language pathologist. Uh, she's written a lot of books, articles, been published, does a lot of traveling around. She has real life supports, suggestions for families in your home regarding executive functioning. It's things that you can implement in your home on a daily basis that don't feel laborious, like the real tips and things that parents need. Um, and so we hooked up with Canton with several other districts. They're planning on April 23rd at 6 p.m., it's great. It's going to be virtual. Um, and then I believe they even said we get the live link for a month, uh, which is awesome. So that's ex exciting. And then Federation, uh, as Sasha was saying before, we had Holly do our basic rights training and then would like to use Federation late in the spring to do the understanding the IEP. Hopefully they are revamping to do the new IEP. Um, but the basics of the IEP are all the same, regardless of how it's written in paper, um, breaking down all parts of the IEP, uh, and that's a, a free training for parents. So those are two exciting ones coming up. And then we also um, are working on with some other uh, CPACs, a, uh, a, a private um, neuropsychologist group is looking to do a presentation on um, disability related anxiety. So, because you know, uh, and kind of talk parents through that. So we're actually looking into partnering with some of those CPACs um, for that virtual presentation. And then additionally, Zora, did you want to talk about some of the things that you have been working on as well? Are, are you referencing Sasha the our February? Is that okay, or do you want to keep that? Yeah, on hold? That's fine. Okay. yeah. Um, so in February, we haven't finalized the date yet, um, but we are going to have Early Bird, um, which is a company spun out of um, Harvard and Mass General, um, looking at early uh, early screeners and and looking at those early literacy skills and giving us um, a great presentation on that and opportunity uh, to learn more as we continue. I think it's you know great. Considering our, our conversation earlier of thinking about those early literacy skills and, and what that means. Um, so we're really excited um, to have them. And if you've, um, Dr. Nadine Gab, who has talked a lot about the Gab Lab and has been featured in all kinds of amazing um, uh, conferences across the country, this is her, her, uh, her brainchild. So it's a, it's a real thrill to have them come join us in February. So I'll keep you posted on the date. Thank you. So um, we, as you can see, are working on on that, and we are also working on um, creating, uh, led by Lauren Sedman, um, who is trained to do so, a monthly support group for parents um, in North Andover in person. And so we have had typically, you know, we have had these formal meetings every month so far. We are hoping once we kind of get reestablished that we will go to more of like a quarterly meeting more formally. And then in between have events, presentations, and then every month have an in-person meeting um, that as a support group 
um, that is for parents only, that is in a neutral location. So everyone feels super comfortable and you can go um, to feel, you know, like you can talk about what's going on for you as a parent um, and how you, you know, we can support you. So um, just please be on the lookout for that. We will, you know, we are, we are securing a location and then we will start that up, you know, hopefully by the first of the year. Um, and then, you know, please, again, we are really, really receptive to feedback and requests. And if you have any, um, anything that you are thinking about or that you wish you had or a resource you just can't find and wish existed, you know, someone, if we don't know someone we know may, may know what that resource is or where it exists elsewhere. So please always feel free to, you can contact any of us individually. Our CPAC emails are just our first initial last name at NorthAndoverCPAC.com or the general um, is hello at NorthAndoverCPAC.com or you can certainly message us on Facebook as well. So um, please feel free to do that at any time. And I think for new business, that was pretty much it. Is there any other new business items that I am missing that anyone would like to discuss? Okay, so on to the president's report. Um, I think that I would just like to solidify with Alyssa the date for the school committee meeting that you'd like us to attend. Is that still November 16th? That is still November 16th. Okay. As long as you're still good with it. Yeah, I think that's totally fine. Okay. It, um, I will say that I know that Nabrin has an event that same day. Um, but I, um, I think that if we push it off any further, I, I would just, I'd want you guys to have this information prior to, you know, your first pass at the budgets and all of that, all of that, all of that stuff, right? So I think pushing it any further, we get into the holiday season, it gets a bit challenging. So if it's, if everyone is okay with it, I'd like to keep it on the 16th, but Alyssa, if, if the school committee has any issues or needs to push it, just let us know. Okay. Yeah. As of right now, we're, we're good. Okay. Um, I also just want to mention um, that just for like full transparency that the executive committee of the CPAC did send a letter to the school committee. Um, it was sent on Sunday, um, just essentially saying that, you know, we really hope that our elected representatives and our children's ed educators will be able to come to a consensus tonight, hopefully, um, because that if they are not able to and negotiations continue to drag out and, you know, if there is a strike in the future, there would be significant impacts to our children, specifically our children um, with disabilities. And so that um, that letter was shared uh, with the school committee. And I know, I, you know, Alyssa received it. We know that negotiations are a process, but would really, you know, wanted to make sure that our job is to advocate for our students with disabilities. And we wanted to make clear that there are significant repercussions to not being in school for those children. Um, so just to kind of let our uh, members know that that letter was um, provided to our school committee. Um, and we hope that um, tonight went well for everyone involved. Alyssa. And I just want to say, um, by policy, only the chair is allowed to respond to the emails, but I do want to let people know that they are received. They each, each and every one of them get read. Um, so if you don't get a response, please know that it's by policy. Um, it's, it's nothing personal, but we, we do appreciate everybody who's reached out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I, and I am um, another kind of, uh, item, um, that we, we felt like and I wanted to bring up as part of the president's report as well is that um, we did previously talk about uh, the attorney general's ruling on the open meeting law complaint response. Um, and part of that ruling was that the committee was required to, within 30 days of receipt of the letter, create meeting minutes of the discussions held. And so we have not seen that publicly. Um, we have not reached out to the school committee to ask about that or to counsel. I'm not asking Alyssa to, to opine on that at all in this meeting, um, but it is something just to let our membership know that we will be asking because we have not received those or seen those in a public meeting. Um, we anticipate, I'm sure, that is being worked on or there was a discussion, um, but we do, um, we do want to um, close the loop on that and move forward. So, um, we will certainly reach out to the school committee regarding that issue and um, anticipate their response. And the last item 
is just uh, urban collaborative apologies I am looking at the agenda on my computer I typically print it out uh, is just urban collaborative so I wanted to briefly touch on uh, last week. Thank you so much to the parents who attended the meeting on Thursday. Uh, the executive board of the CPAC met with Urban Collaborative on Wednesday. We had a lovely meeting. Um, I felt like it was really productive. And then on Thursday, the parent turnout was excellent. And we really appreciate everyone taking the time and effort out of very busy schedules to share your feedback and thoughts um, with Urban Collaborative, because that's what's going to make, you know, a, a productive report and productive recommendations if they have information from parents. So just want to thank everyone for their participation and continued participation in our meetings. Um, we hope that we can continue to um, serve you folks and, and do good work. Any other comments from the executive committee before we move forward? Any public comments that we allow for kind of a, all these meetings are pretty, pretty casual, um, comparably, but any other um, non agenda item comments that anyone would like to speak about before we end the meeting. Sora. Sure. Um, you had mentioned the um, the Napron event coming up next week. So um, just it's not a CPAC event, but um, certainly. You know, happy to share that Napron is having an event on November 16th, and it will be at the North Andover High School, and they're featuring uh, a lot of the staff from the North Andover Public Schools. So um, anyway, it's a great event. I think, Meg, you shared that maybe on our Facebook page. Awesome. Yeah, so the information is there. Um, yeah, so just want to put a plug in for that. Thank you. Lauren. Do any of our liaisons have anything that they'd like to update us on from their schools, their PTO meetings, anything noteworthy for this meeting? Hi, this is Erin um, from NAMS, and we actually haven't had another PTO meeting, but I did share uh, the information on our Facebook page. Thank you, Erin. Thank you. Really appreciate it. I think it went out in the nightly newsletter today. I didn't, I saw it on the, um, I believe the, the links to those two, the events, you had the CPAC event and the, um, apron event went out too. <clears throat> awesome. Okay. If there are no other comments or questions, um, I will take a motion to adjourn the meeting. Motion to so adjourn. Moved. Do I have a second? All right, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks you. Everyone. Have a great night. Bye.